If you notice, know um, join me and listen to the words. Oh, hallelujah. I found joy. I've been changed in the presence of the Lord. I've been. Oh, hallelujah. Free. Deliver. Deliver. And in your presence, Lord. I found, I found joy. Go back. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I won't go back. I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence changed me. I want to share the scripture reading with you from the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 18, reading from verse one, it says, the word came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, arise and go down to the potter's house and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house and behold, he wrought a work on the wheel and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again, another vessel, as seems good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter said the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. Almighty God, I pray that we would surrender ourselves to you. We would give ourselves over to you, dear Lord, just as the potter has power over the clay, so that you can make us into the vessel of honor that you so desire. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. You know, what a powerful song that says that it won't go back to the way that it used to be. And it talks about the transformational power of God. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. And the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah and said to him, go down to the potter's house. You see, there are times when God wants to take us away so that we can go to him so he can speak to us. Do you hear me today? There are times when God wants to take us away from all of our hustle and the bustle and all of the distraction that comes around in our lives. And he wants to take us away so that he can speak to us. And that's exactly what he said to Jeremiah. I need you to go to the potter's house where I will cause thee to hear my words. You know, in the New Testament, 
The Bible talks about entering into his closet and shut the door and praying to your father and your father who see who see it the in secret will reward you openly and i want to encourage you today yeah to come down to the potter's house uh, do you hear me today yeah come down to the potter's house in fact uh, you can make anywhere the potter's house once you have that quiet time uh, with almighty god once you're away from all of the distraction and that's exactly what the uh, he said to Jeremiah, so Jeremiah obeyed and he went down to the potter's house and behold, he saw the work that the potter was doing on the wheel. Today, I want to talk with you about four things in this message. Number one, the direction. Number two, the vessel. Number three, the transformation. And number four, the contrast. When God gives us direction, it is for us to follow. When thus said the Lord comes to our heart and to our lives, uh, it's for us to drop everything uh, and move in the direction in which uh, he wants us to go. Uh, he directed uh, Jeremiah down to the potter's house, uh, just the same way he is directing us uh, that we must go to the potter's house, uh, that we can see the work that God wants to do for us. Uh, in in second chronicles it says if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways he says then will i hear from heaven following god's direction sometimes is hard because we can't always trace God in how he's directing us and how he's guiding us. But I rather know that I'm following God's direction and may not be sure about it. But knowing that he has directed me and allow him to work out the process. Do you hear me today? Yeah. And that's what God wants us to do is to follow his direction not not for us to hide not for us to run not for us to quarrel not for us uh, to procrastinate uh, not for us uh, you know uh, to put up resistance but just to follow his direction has god been speaking to you lately are you in obedient to him like jeremiah jeremiah went down to the potter's house uh, and uh, he, he he saw the workshop hallelujah he, i mean there he was uh, seeing uh, the workshop uh, not just the direction uh, to the potter's house uh, but uh, he he was in the workshop of uh, the potter's house and there he saw the potter at work uh, you know what a practical example that God has given Jeremiah when he went down uh, to the potter's house uh, and he entered into the potter's workshop. I picked up some, some um, uh, Play-Doh uh, and uh, the Play-Doh is like clay and it's just like uh, the potter working with clay. And here I am, uh, you know, working through this Play-Doh, uh, trying uh, to make it a shape. In fact, uh, this pulpit has become uh, my workshop. Uh, and here I'm trying uh, to form something uh, that is of my own desire and that's exactly what god wanted to do uh, and he gave the example to jeremiah and that's what god wants to do to you and to me uh, when we come down to his workshop uh, he wants to work on us uh, that's right uh, as the songwriter says he want to be able to get rid of our shame and get rid of our guilt uh, and get well rid of our sorrow get rid of our pain uh, bring about healing uh, bring about deliverance uh, grace give us joy unspeakable and full of glory uh, it but it's only happened uh, in the workshop of our lord and savior jesus christ i have a workshop in the garage and in the workshop i have uh, tools like a saw and a hammer and a plane uh, and, and i have an emery wheel uh, and i also have uh, um, a sander and I use those tools uh, in order to create uh, something uh, of woodwork uh, that I think uh, might be desirable. In fact, uh, 
This pulpit that I have, I, I made it in the workshop. But you see, the tools that I have in the workshop can't do much for my heart and for my life. But the tools that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has, and when he put those tools to work on us, it can bring a transformational change in ways and means that we would not imagine. There is no one else on earth that can tell you that they have tools that can destroy fear and tools that can bring healing and tools that can bring deliverance and tools that can remove guilt and tools that can bring joy and tools that can forgive sin and tools that can transform our lives and make us a new person. No one else on earth. But the Bible directed Jeremiah to the workshop so that he can experience the transformation power of God. So he gave him direction. Then he sent him to the workshop. And then he says, here I saw the vessel in the potter's hand that was marred. I know life has not been very kind to us these past two years and we have we, we have come away with a number of scars uh, in our lives uh, our children have left some scars uh, in our lives uh, that we would never recover from it might be a friend also who may have left some scars and it might be a neighbor it might be life itself uh, it might be an illness it might be a job or a lack of job. And there's so many scars that we have to live with. And some may have contracted COVID. And we go from the virus to the Delta virus to, to the Omicron. And, and it just goes on. And it just seems like there is just so much scars in our lives that we wonder how we're going to get rid of it. But remember, Jesus had the first scar. That's right. Uh, when they nailed him to the cross of Calvary, yeah, the Bible tells us the nail pierced uh, his, uh, his palms uh, and pierced his uh, feet. Uh, and also the sword went into his side. Those scars that Jesus had was for you and for me. Yeah. And because he had those scars in his life, uh, he has the power to remove the scars in our life uh, and bring deliverance and set us free. Yeah. Hallelujah. He can take that vessel and he can make it what he wants it to be. Yeah. The Bible says any man being Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, everything has become new. So he wants us to be like the clay in the potter's hand that he can mold us and shape us. There's a songwriter that says, Spirit of the living God, fall on me. Spirit of the living God, fall on me. Mold me and shape me and make me. And that's what God wants to do for this new year. He wants to make us and mold us. Because we, he, he knows what we've been through. And all of the roughness that is we have experienced in our lives. And then he says, the potter took the clay. And because it was marred, because it was marred in his hands, I, I, I want you to look at that. He said, because it was marred uh, in his hand, which means that, 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 that there was something that was not right, that something that needed to be fixed. And then uh, he said he took the clay, the potter took the clay and remake it and remold it. And came out with uh, a different vessel. Hallelujah. It came out with a, a different vessel. Uh, hallelujah. And that's what uh, I want you to understand. If any man be in Christ, uh, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, uh, everything uh, has become new. Uh, and he uh, can create uh, a different vessel within uh, our heart uh, and within our lives. Uh, if we allow him uh, to mold us uh, and to shape us and to bring the, the deliverance that is necessary to transform us in what he wants us to be. Yeah. 
And sometimes the process of transformation can be painful. Sometimes the process of transformation can itself be taxing and challenging. But in the end, the, the, the byproduct in the end, hallelujah, this is made from clay after it's been baked and everything else. The byproduct in the end can be something beautiful and something amazing. And that's what God wants to do. And, and before he was finished with Jeremiah, he sent him down. He said, go, oh, oh, he says, the word of the Lord came to me saying, oh, house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter? Said the Lord, behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hands, O house of Israel. I'd rather be in the hands of Almighty God than any other hands. You've, you've heard of all state that says you're in good hands. Well, uh, I want you to know uh, that Jesus' hands uh, are the best of hands uh, that can mold and shape uh, and control uh, your life. Uh, if you will only allow him uh, it, for him to say, yeah, for him to say, oh, I, you know, oh, house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter? Cannot I do with you? That's what all, Almighty God is saying. Cannot I do with you as this potter? If there is a great potter in our lives, is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I can tell you today, yeah, if we allow him uh, to mold us, if we allow him uh, to shape us, if we allow him uh, to take uh, the, the, the scars uh, and everything else in our lives uh, and reshape us, uh, we can see the contrast. Uh, we can see what we were before to what we have become now. Uh, we can see the transformation power that comes uh, from knowing him uh, as personal savior. I pray today that you would uh, allow uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ uh, to bring about a transformational change uh, in your heart and in your life uh, so that you can come back uh, and you can say, uh, I've been changed. You can say, Lord, do for me what I cannot do for myself. Lord, I just cannot go back to the way I was. But I want to experience you in your love. I want to experience you, Lord, in your goodness and in your grace. If you would allow God to do that for you today. If you can allow him to change and transform your life today, yeah, then you can rejoice. Uh, you, your, your heart uh, can rejoice and sing uh, this song from the very depths of your heart. Where you will experience him. This year in ways and means that you would never experience him before. Hallelujah. And you can testify. I have been changed. Healed. Freed. And delivered. I found joy. Peace. Grace. And God's favor. Now may the grace of, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May he bless us and shape us and mold us. In what he wants us to be today. In his holy name. Hallelujah. In the presence of the Lord. I'm May God bless you.